Hi guys, Jordan down here at Team Winnebago Land Marine Center. We're back for another Fish Friday. So um, today I just want to run you through some of the options that we have for Hummingbird Helixes. I know that the ice season is kind of starting to wind down now, but the good thing about that is, is with these Helixes you can actually use them if you get an ice conversion kit, you can use it on the ice, then you can actually take that same unit and put it right on your boat. So. Um, some compatibility um, stuff there. We like this Helix 9 that we have here. You would be able to rig it up with um, Mega Live imaging. So we have a couple Mega Live transducers in stock. You would also need the ice pole and like conversion kit for your boat and all that kind of stuff. But we could run through that if that's something that you're looking to do. Um, just going with the latest and greatest G4N Helix 9, then you would have compatibility with all that kind of stuff along with Mega 360 and all that. Um, with that being said, I was actually just using it over the weekend. We were doing some burbot fishing, so if anybody isn't familiar with burbot, they're also called lawyers, eel pout. Um, they're in the cod family, so they're, uh, they they kind of look like an eel, and they move up onto shallow water this time of the year to spawn, actually, under the ice. So um, it makes them very vulnerable to, to fishing, so we've been after them a little bit and been having some very good success. So um, just kind of wanted to show you what I'm looking for when I'm going out there after the burbot. So um, this weekend we were on Lake Winnebago. Uh, we went to the southern end of the lake and we were kind of hopping around on different pieces of structure, um, finding either sand, rock, or gravel. And we actually found fish on all three of those, um, ranging from anywhere in like a foot and a half out to five feet of water. So when we're going to find those, I'm looking for um, shallow water that's adjacent to the deep mud flats of Lake Winnebago. It's, it's been said that most of those burbot hang out over the mud flats throughout most of the year and then they move up into these shallow areas to spawn right now. So you're kind of looking for areas that are easy for them to access out of that deeper water. So um, if we just look at the, the helix here, you can see on Lake Masters Chip. So I would say one of the most popular areas on the lake is Long Point Reef. So that's down by Fond du Lac out in front of Wentz. Um, this is where we did our fishing and we were able to find all the different kinds of substrate that we were looking for. Um, we actually found them close to the islands. There's a couple islands down here on the Long Point complex and we found fish by both of them. Um, our best fishing seemed to be right up in like the two feet because those fish were really moving up in there to spawn. Um, they were in there pretty thick. So um, I'll kind of run you through how I go about fishing those. Um, it's definitely not rocket science and you can see them down the hole we're sight fishing for them so uh, yeah follow me and I'll show you all about that alrighty guys so this weekend we had our best success using big heavy spoons big jigging spoons um, like buckshots cast masters Swedish pimples that kind of stuff um, and then tipped with cut bait so I bought some golden shiners and then just chunked them up into little pieces threaded that onto the treble hook just so you have a big stinky wad of, of minnow on there so um, Speaking of jigging spoons, this here is a, a buckshot spoon, so it's, I believe, their largest size. Um, the benefit to using a buckshot like this is it's nice and heavy, and it also has a rattle in it. So, um, Burbot's vision is pretty, uh, pretty terrible. So, um, a lot of the time what you'll see is you'll sit there and pound the bottom with it. So, making that bait really rattle, pounding into the rocks, making a lot of noise, and then you'll see that burbot come in, and a lot of the time they won't even, it seems like they don't even see it. Like they'll run into it before they even know it's there. And you'll see their fins stick out and they'll back up. And then you just dangle that right in front of their face and they'll suck it in and, and give it to them. So it's a lot of fun that way of being able to sight fish them. Um, being such shallow water, I do like a rod with a little bit of give. So this is a, a medium um, widow maker. It's by 13 Fishing, one of my favorite rods. Um, but I just spool that up with an eight pound braid and then this is a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. So in that shallow water, they definitely fight hard. Um, essentially like the whole back half of their body is a tail. So, so they really fight hard when you hook into them. Um, just having a rod that, that has some give to it. So when they're sh down there shaking their head, um, it allows for that flex in their rod and, and be able to play them out a little bit better. So another spoon that we had luck with was also the macho minnow. So um, once again, very similar to a buckshot spoon nice big profile as opposed to a rattle though this one has a metal fin that hangs off the bottom so what that does is it knocks into that treble and into the body of the bait itself so just makes a different kind of noise seem to be very productive too um, these were definitely our best two spoons 
So um, once again, just having something big that you can pound the bottom with, really call them in, seems to be the most productive. And then just having that big wad of bait on there to, to seal the deal when they get close is definitely the way to do it. Um, we also tried some other spoons. Uh, we tried some big Swedish pimples, um, other colors of macho minnows. It seemed like golds or like really br bright fluorescent colors did the best. Um, we also tried just using a lead head jig with a twister tail on it. Um, we didn't have much luck this way, but I know at times guys do. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of the way that we go about it. Once again, just finding that shallow water, pounding bottom, making a lot of noise, and, and you should have some luck with the burbot. So good luck to you guys if you make it out there. We'll talk to you soon. And if you guys do have a chance to get out, I would say that this bite's probably gonna last for another week, maybe a few days here yet. Um, and you do have some success. What I tried doing last night for preparing them was um, just taking that and skinning it, gutting it, and then staking it up. So just literally chopping that whole fish into four or five sections, and then taking that and throwing it in a boiling pot of seven up actually. So I've heard of guys trying that. I tried it for the first time last night. It gives it more of like a sweet flavor. Um, so just boil that for four or five minutes um, until once again gets nice and opaque white and flaky. So it's a it's more of a firm fish. It's not like a walleye. Um, it has it's it's much more dense, more like a, like a swordfish kind of. Um, so they actually call it poor man's lobster. When you boil it like that, um, you can take that and, and dip it into melted butter. So once you boil it, that meat will just pull right off of the bones. Dip it in butter, and it's so. Good luck to you guys.